had some Miami Heat trade rumors on today's show regarding Brandon Ingram and Jimmy Butler. B.I. has been someone linked to the Miami Heat in the past, and obviously Jimmy rumors have never gone away. And we're going to talk about where Jimmy could possibly go and why the Heat are a good fit for Brandon Ingram because Bleacher Report kind of had some ideas. We're going to talk about the Jimmy Butler best trade fit on the back half of today's show. So make sure you stay tuned for that because it is a pretty interesting conversation. But we are going to start with Brandon Ingram and why he is actually a good fit in the 305. Because Bleacher Report labeled the Heat as the best fit as a trade destination for Brandon Ingram. They specifically said that if the Heat lose Butler, the wisest path forward might be a slower build focused on Bam and Abayo, Tyler Hero, and Jaime Hawkes Jr. That team already has a pretty intriguing core beyond its superstar. On the other hand, there may be value in taking some pressure off those three, and Brandon Ingram's mid-range sk- game and playmaking skills could make him sort of a Butler... What the hell is that word, Bleacher Report? I'm too dumb to do that. We talk basketball. Well, I don't know what they're trying to do around here. They're outclassing me. Ridiculous. Move on. Of course, he's not quite on the same talent tier, so having Ingram as a potential Butler replacement would require steps from Hero and Hawkeyes, but maybe... Miami might be stylistically consistent. And listen, they had a lot of interesting things to say. Jokes aside about that word, still don't know what it is. Told you, I'm very dumb. We only talk basketball around here. But on a basketball level, I'm not paying Brandon Ingram $50 plus million dollars per season. I'm not. And that's the issue. That's why he's even a potential trade target for the Miami Heat. Because him and the Pelicans can't agree to a contract extension. This is the last year for B.I. in his deal. The reports and rumors out there is that he wants $50 million per year over four seasons which listen go get your paper go get your bread Brandon Ingram because you're a fine player that it gives you 20 plus a night and can get to his spots and score efficiently but here's my issue if you are not a top two player on a championship team and I don't think there's really anyone in the NBA really or in the NBA media landscape fans doesn't matter who believes Brandon Ingram could be a one or two on a championship team. He is a really good third option. There's no hate in that. Third options get paid good money. Hell, I'll sign up to be a third option any day of the week. And for Miami's sake, why would we move into this and pay him $50 million if Jimmy Butler ended up leaving? It makes no freaking sense. He is not a needle mover in terms of leading your basketball team. And if he is not going to be a top two player on your team, I'm not paying you 50 mil. I've made this comparison in the past with Brandon Ingram, and I'm going to hold true to this. I would pay him what OG Onanobi got paid by the New York Knicks because OG's getting paid like a third high-end fourth option um, at 43, 44 mil per season. I think that's what Brandon Ingram's worth. The question is, will B.I. take 43-44, or is he just going to continually push for 50? That kind of makes me make my decision on if I would trade for Brandon Ingram or not. But let me know your decision on Brandon Ingram. Would you trade for B.I.? Type YFBS or type N for no. Let me know your thoughts on Miami trading for the former top three overall pick. As I said, not paying him 50 mil. But there is an interesting kind of out here, right? He's a free agent next year. I might be willing to take the chance on Ingram at the deadline. I would. And this is very specifically to Miami being really good this season, being above 500 by, what, seven, eight games at the deadline. Maybe they still want to trade him. And you can get Brandon Ingram for a pretty discounted price tag because it's like, well, he's a free agent coming up and – I don't know if he's going to want to take our contract. So the price point might be a little bit lower than you would think on Brandon Ingram at the trade deadline, unless there is a quite big bidding war. But it also would allow you to get him here, see how he interacts in your organization, see how he works off the court, on the court with the Jaime, with the Bam, with Tyler. So you could make the informed decision on like, well, do we feel confident about Brandon Ingram being um, with those young three other guys and being a core four for the future if Jimmy Butler ultimately leaves in free agency? So I think I would be in on trading at Brandon Ingram at the deadline if it doesn't cost you an arm and a leg, just due to the fact that you might be able to get a shortened look at if Ingram could be a core four with those other three guys in replacing Jimmy Butler. Coming up in just a second, we're going to talk about those Jimmy Butler rumors that we teased at the top half of today's show. But first, got to show some love to Prize Picks, the number one daily fantasy sports app in North America. And with the season almost here, make sure you get started with Prize Picks and play them on a daily basis like 
5 million other active members. And unlike other apps, Daily Fantasy Sports, that is, prize picks, you just pick against the numbers. All you do is pick more or less on two to six player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in. And with two football weekends left, take advantage of the one Caleb Williams passing yard special. Yes, one passing yard gets you one win on prize picks every week in September. Two weekends to go. That's all you need to get one. And I'm looking at this football weekend, specifically at the Bears-Colts matchup. I'll take advantage of that Caleb Williams special, more than half a passing yard. It's the less than on Anthony Richardson, 185 and a half passing yards. I don't know if any of you guys are Florida Gators fans. I know those are your boy and he's your guy, but he's been struggling throwing the football. I'll take the less. You can join me in celebrities like Drewski, Joe Budden, Sugar Sean O'Malley. You can also find those picks, by the way, from those stars on the community plays under the promo most have in the app very fun to tell them in some of their picks but either way download the prize picks app today and use code clns and get fifty dollars instantly when you play five dollars that's code clns on prize picks to get fifty dollars instantly when you play five dollars you don't even need the win to receive the fifty dollar bonus it's guaranteed prize picks run your game all right, the best fit with Jimmy Butler potentially leaving the Miami Heat in a trade would be the Golden State Warriors. And they did that specifically to Jimmy Butler fitting on that basketball team. But I got to be honest, folks. I think that would also potentially be the best case for the Miami Heat. I think the Warriors have one of the best trade packages around if you wanted to deal Jimmy Butler. I've said this for a long time. If you're trading Jimmy, I'm interested in what Golden State has to offer. I'm a fan of Jonathan Kaminga. I'm not as high on Brandon Podziemski as some other people are in the NBA circle, and specifically the Golden State Warriors organization, but they also have a Moses Moody, two first-round picks to offer. Like, you're telling me at the deadline, if you're 500 or below, the Warriors come calling and they're like we'll give you Kaminga and two first round picks you're not intrigued by that offer on the off chance that he leaves and for agency like you would really have to reevaluate where you are as a franchise and consider that trade because Kaminga is improving year after year after year and he finally took that mini baby step that the Warriors fans and organization thought he could have this past year averaging six point 16.3 points per game, shooting efficiently. Sure, he does need to improve his three-point jumper, but he is reminds me a lot of a young Russell Westbrook, the way he can get to the rim and use this athleticism and lengthy arms and bunnies to finish on top of you, finish around you, amongst the trees, but also sets you up with a nice little hezzy hey pull-up elbow jumper, which Russ patented and knocked down so often. If Kaminga's able to develop a more consistent 36%, 37% three-point shot off the dribble, off the catch, we're now talking about someone who can defend at a very high level, get to the rim, score at all three levels, and is one of the younger guys in the NBA. Like That is something that really intrigues me. And I'm not saying it's a passion project or it's a project in general because he's already got some of those tools hammered down. If you can get him in your shooting lab and improve that shot, that is someone I would be willing to trade Jimmy Butler for, no questions asked. And I would actually prefer him over Brandon Podziemski because I don't think Pods fits with this Miami Heat guards that they already have in terms of Hero, Rozier, Duncan, and some other guys. Kaminga, though, could fill in for the, at the three for Jimmy Butler or even play the four, and you have Jaime start at the three and run a little bit more of an athletic, speedy, switchable, more scheme team that Eric Spolster likes to do. Where would you trade Jimmy? If you are trading Butler, if you are bad at the deadline and you end up trading Jimmy, where would it be? Let me know what team you want to trade Jimmy to down below. Not that I want to trade Jimmy, but if there was another team, it would be the Houston Rockets. I think the top two options are Golden State and Houston. Now, Houston, if they overachieve, might be looking for that veteran piece that can really get them over the hump, and maybe Jimmy Butler is that piece. They have so many draft picks to trade. They have like eight or nine draft picks that they can trade in the first round. They have young guys like Jalen Green, Alfred Shen-Goon, um, Cam Whitmore, Reed Shepard, uh, Jabari Smith, like they have so many good young guys. I'm on Thompson too, that it at least intrigues me to talk with them. And listen, we've talked about this quite a bit 
if you stink at the deadline, you might have to trade Jimmy or at least think about it. And if I'm doing it, I would probably talk to Golden State first and then potentially Houston second. But beggars can't be choosers if you're trading Jimmy Butler, right? All right, that's going to do it for today's show. Make sure you hit that sub button. We are so, so close until Heat Basketball is back. We are about 11 days away, maybe eight, nine days away from the training camp uh, portion of the season beginning, which is going to be a lot of fun. And then we got the preseason. So hit that sub button because we'll be your one-stop shop for everything Miami Heat. Thank you.